Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Michele Lancione and I'm the co-director with Abdu Malik Simon of the Beyond in Habitation Lab. I'm here today in my office with two colleagues that are part of the lab, Jennifer Zahan and Kiara Picciotti. And um, the lab is situated in Turin, Italy, and is a lab that looks at uh, issues of housing justice and habitation at large in a number of geographies across the world. Now, today, I'm not really here to chair. The chairing is going to be done by a dear colleague of us, uh, who is also part of the lab, uh, Dr. Chiara Iacovone. With Chiara, we are looking at a um, number of uh, uh, housing uh, uh, justice issues uh, in the city of Tirana and Albania. And uh, at large, we are interested in uh, Central Eastern Europe. And uh, we think that today, we are really privileged in having uh, with us Professor Enrico Vincenzo. Uh, and our discussions because of the research they have done and the project they have just concluded that we are going to hear about. So this is everything from me really, and Chiara will now take the chair. Thank you, Chiara. Hi everyone. Uh, thanks Michele for the brief introduction. So I'm going to chair this um, afternoon uh, seminar and um, just before uh, to, uh, introduce uh, our guest, uh, just a reminder how we're going to be structured. Uh, we will have um, uh, the lecture of Professor Nico Vince, and then the two uh, that will take uh, uh, approximately 40 to 45 minutes. And then the two uh, discussants, uh, Joanna Florea and Ari McElroy, that will take approximately 10 minutes each. And then we will open the floor to question and uh, discussion. Um, so uh welcome everyone <laughs> our guest and uh, so uh, Enrico Vince uh, is a professor at uh, Babes Bolia University of Cluj Napoca in Romania uh, during the 90s uh, she conducted research on nationalism identity politics and feminism since 2004 she had coordinated investigation and published studies on the marginalization of ethnic roma in healthcare school education labor market and housing including the examination of intersectional discrimination of romani women and their uh, political potential um, starting from in uh, 2010 she had been involved in uh, housing justice activism being part of the local kashi uh, sociale acum uh, so social housing now movement and uh, national platform block for housing uh, in the past five years uh, an equal focus on how capitalism and neoliberal governance create but are also dependent on unjust partial housing and uh, urban development producing unevenness across geography and social classes that cannot be solved within the limits of capitalist uh, political economy um then the first discussant, uh, Joanna Florea, is affiliated researcher at University of Gothenburg. She had been researching on social spatial dynamics in poor neighborhoods in Romanian cities. Uh, youth experience of outdoor public uh, spaces marked by post-socialist transformation and spatial process of social differentiation. Since 2006, uh, she has been involved within uh, several grassroots organizations from Bucharest, working on social and environmental justice and the right to the city. Then the, uh, the other discussion, uh, Erin McElroy um, is an assistant professor at uh, geography uh, of geography at the University of Washington and is co-founder of the uh, Anti-Eviction Mapping Project, a counter cartography and digital media collective that produce map tools and stories to support the work of housing justice in gentrifying cities. Erin's research focuses on the intersection of poverty, eviction, technology, data, and uh, empire in the US and Romania, from context of uh, Russia dispossession and techno capitalism to housing justice and anti imperial organizing. Their newer, uh, newest project, Lender Tech Watch, is a collective effort dedicated to mapping out the arms associated with landlord surveillance technologies such as the biometric cameras and tenants uh, screening algorithms. Um, Erin also is also an editor of the Radical Housing Journal, an open access journal that brings together housing organizer and researcher transnationally. So here <laughs> I have introduced our guest and uh, so please the floor is your uh, Aniko. <laughs> you can share your screen. 
Uh, thank you so much, Chiara. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michele, first of all, for providing us space and time here. Uh, I'm speaking in plural because uh, I'm going to talk about uh, collective research of which uh, Joanna Flora was also part of, uh, alongside other, other colleagues from, from Cluj and other cities from Romania. I'm very happy that we can be here old friends and uh, scholarly colleagues and uh, um, activist comrades. And um, again, happy Michele that I could meet your, your great team through which you implement uh, this very uh, ambitious project. Um, so uh, now I shared my screen, hopefully uh, you can all see it. The, the title of the presentation starts with a rhetorical question, why invest in Romania? Uh, actually, I'm going to speak about investment strategies and state interventions, which advance real estate development in semi-peripheries. Uh, okay, so hopefully all will go, go well, technically speaking. I, I start... Uh, uh, my talk with these pictures uh, uh, where you can uh, discover Eri, if you look well, and some here, here, uh, Joanna Floria. Uh, with Eri, we were working through street, uh, streets of, of Cluj-Napoca, uh, most importantly in a central area, uh, which was in 2018 under uh, um, a great so-called urban regeneration. Uh, out of that um, experimental uh, small research in Cluj, later we published uh, uh, this book in Romanian, uh, Construction Site uh, for, for Profit. And, and as I said, in this next picture, you um, can see an image uh, of uh, one small part of one of the factories of Brasov city, where, uh, among others, we conducted our, our research. Out of this research, uh, I'm very happy to announce uh, that uh, we are having a forthcoming uh, volume published at Rutledge entitled Andaman Real Estate Development in Romania at the intersection of deindustrialization and financialization. But start with this rhetorical question, why invest in Romania, which is a question for both investors and for the Romanian state. And I uh, selected here some uh, images, which we are not going to uh, go deep into them, uh, just uh, give, they, they give us a sense of how the, the uh, governmental platform Invest Romania promotes the country by saying how advanced advantages is in what regards its low corporate tax rates, low VATs and low dividend taxes. Um, and also the state starts, uh, uh, tries to attract investors also by different programs by which they, they give state aid to companies. Um, obviously, as you, you all know, there are different actors in the real estate development and, and the trade sector. Uh, among others, there are uh, companies which provide real estate services. This is, uh, for example, the CBRE, which also conducts research and publishes uh, data about, about um, uh, real estate investments, for example, in Romania too. Uh, into uh, for the year 2021. Uh, for example, uh, it was this observation of theirs that in this country, the office sector accounted for 65% of the traded real estate volume by the industrial sector accounted for 26%. And in what regards the origin of the capital invested into real estate investment, uh, the, the list was led by Austrians, followed by American and Czech um, investors, but also South African, Swede, um, Switzerland, Germany, and Greece also provide investors for, uh, for Romania. Let us uh, continue or enter basically into the discussion about our, our research project, which we conducted between 2021 and 23. 
uh, entitled Class Formation and Reurbanization Through Real Estate Development in a Semi-Peripheral Country of Global Capitalism. The spe special focus of our research is represented by this college of pictures, which uh, I made uh, by using the, the photos made by, by our research team. So they all reflect uh, uh, all the industrial platforms, factory buildings in different stage of, uh, uh, of degradation. So our special focus in this uh, research was the transformation of industrial platforms like this into sites of real estate development. And we uh, approached real estate development both as a product as an, and a constitutive factor of capitalist transformations in Romania, which was a former state socialist country. Uh, we made a lot of interviews. Among others, I've made an interview with uh, um, the director of Blitz Real Estate Agency, and he said it very clearly that these former industrial platforms are investors' gold mines because they have infrastructure and they are situated in semi-central urban areas and they, they, they are large investment opportunities and allow um, very ambitious uh, development projects uh, based, as he said, on a unitary lifestyle concept appealing to prospective uh, uh, residents. Uh, going further uh, in, in presenting our research, um, I put here uh, the map of, of Romania, uh, all these um, colored, uh, um, black colored counties are the counties where we uh, conducted research uh, in their, uh, actually in their uh, con county uh, centers, in Cluj-Napoca, uh, in Yash, in Burlat from Vlaslui, in Brasov, in Gorj, in Dorj, Karas Severin, Dreshica, and um, in, uh, in a small uh, new town nearby the capital city called uh, Bragadiru. So we were quite a, a, a small but uh, a, a very, very enthusiastic team uh, covering all these, all these cities, uh, including Ioana, Sori but also Suringo, Marina Mironica, Miail, Dumitriu, Ioana Vlad, and George Zanfir. And for the all, all the all the cities and the, the developments, respectively former industrial platforms that we targeted by our research, we, we uh, collected uh, different documents, uh, um, including municipality documents regarding development strategies, but also including uh, national legislation, obviously, because we wanted to uh, um, uh, understand local processes in the light of national uh, changes, uh, but also documents of World Bank, of IMM, IMF, of European Commission. We also use databases and reports of different uh, institutes, the National Statistical Institute, the, the Cadastre Office, the uh, Trade Registry National Office, Eurostat, Romania Central Bank, um, so on and, and so forth. Uh, besides the team that uh, uh, conducted the uh, field research in these in these cities uh, uh we also had in in our group uh, the the uh, 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 famous uh, um, author researcher on housing and housing financialization manuel albers um who for example in his his chapter prepared for our forthcoming read of collective volume observed uh how what he called the lumpen geography of the industrialized lands in Romania became a reserve space to be redeveloped and became a golden opportunity for global pension fund capitalism. Okay, so the, the scheme that you see here, uh, again, well, obviously it's schematic, but tries to reflect uh, the, the so many factors that we consider that we have to look on at uh, um, to understand why real estate development emerges and advances in a way it advances. So obviously for, for real estate development, 
one needs land, a land to be built uh, on industrial, agricultural or residential spaces, but land is not enough. You also need capital to invest it into uh, these, these properties, this development land uh, landed properties development and this capital in the in our case comes from the real estate sector and the financial sector uh, in, in including uh, therefore uh, not only developers constructors and real estate managers and cons consultants and agencies but also banks local and global investment funds brokerage companies stock markets but this is not enough to have uh, uh, real estate development as business and, and create conditions for its emergence and advancement, you also need politics. Uh, therefore, uh, we, we analyzed uh, state policies, the Romanian state's policies, um, in what regards mostly the privatization of economic enterprises, which led to deindustrialization in the majority of cases, privatization of housing, banks, uh, but also legislation um, for investment funds, the fiscality, urbanism, entrepreneurial governance. So all this mixture of policy domains, which all had to be restructured in order to make real estate development happen. And this again, it wasn't enough because we could observe uh, that uh, uh, begin, beginning with the 1990s, uh, international organizations, including financial organizations, uh, but not only, um, were, were, were putting a, a pressure on the other Romanian government to advance this privatization and all those conditions uh, which were needed for the formation of market economy or capitalism in Romania. So we uh, followed uh, different policies uh, coming from the global level in this sense, like the free movement of capital, market deregulation, the risking capital investment and interest rates. Okay, and uh, looking for theoretical uh, frames and concepts um, through which we tried to um, give a sense to what we observe with this happening at local levels, and also to connect our research to researches performed in, in other geographies. We made use of, of, of several uh, concepts from uh, Marxist political economy, critical geography, sociology, critical urban theories, and these concepts I again put here on even development, accumulation by dispossession, spatial fixing, and capital switching. Um, the, these, these, these terms are more or less already well known, even outside of, of the spheres where they were uh, coined. Uh, spatial fixing, capital switching refer actually to procedures by which um, the, the, the capital looks always for more and more profitable investment opportunities. Spatial fixing means looking for such opportunities uh, through geographical expansion. And for example, Romania became uh, could be, become such a space uh, uh, which could be used for uh, capital from advanced core capitalist countries uh, to, to be as, as, as a location for, for new investments and also as market and cheap labor force. Okay. Capital switching, as you know, is about um, transferring investments from one economic sector to another, most importantly from productive uh, economic sectors towards uh, investments into built environment, which includes also uh, um, real estate um, development. So actually, when, when Romania became part of global capitalism, all these uh, processes were already ongoing uh, because all this happened in the in the 1990s. Um, in in what regards the, the the concepts of uneven development, which is related to accumulation by dispossession, again I do not want to uh, make this story very long. Just a, a short reminder. Uh, to, to say that we approached uneven geographical development 
at different scales. So we did not follow only how Romania as an underdeveloped country or emerging market uh, was used for global capital for their investments, but also followed how uneven geographical development happened within the country between different regions. And, and, and here, these figures actually on the map um, show the, the GDP per capita as percentage of national overage and uh, gives us a sense about you know, the hierarchies in terms of economic development between the counties where we conducted uh, uh, research. Okay, so uh, I go further to illustrate this um, theoretical uh, approach and, and geographical options that we uh, selected. Uh, through the case of Brashov. So I want to illustrate uh, through one specific case, through one specific uh, former industrial platform from Brashov called Traktoru, how that was changed into uh, a site for new real estate development. And as I said, this actually illustrates how investment strategies and state interventions, so the topic of, our, of my talk actually, uh, resulted in in this in this transformation, and and here uh, it's um, the, the the this case study is very generous because really offers this great example. If you wish, uh, the here you see um, uh, a picture of the old tractor roof uh, factory, which uh, uh, was quite large. Uh, uh, displayed on uh, above 100 hectares, and it had 28,000 uh, employees uh, during state socialist times. Um, tractor, so they made tractor, actually exported a lot. Okay, so uh, this uh, large territory uh, was uh, transformed, so-called regenerated, restructured, uh, to make place for a mixed-use development. Uh, in, uh, uh, the developers, the investors named it Koresi, uh, Koresi district. Uh, and it, uh, it was, it's a, it's a mixed-use development. It includes uh, uh, buildings uh, uh, which are part of what they call Koresi um, offices. Um, and uh, then uh, it includes uh, this part, which actually is uh, forming the Koresi shopping uh, um, center, so shopping resort. Uh, it also includes a hotel, Hotel Cosmo, and uh, and a quite large uh, residential uh, development. Uh, I will speak a bit uh, about about all these um, in some in some details uh, to uh, to describe what happens when global capital meets local lands and actors. Uh, and I would start from the global investor. And uh, and its uh, and its strategies, which in our case is uh, Imoshan, which was the real estate branch of the French multinational company Oshan. Its name, and not only name, but also the logic of its functioning, was changed in 2018. Since when it is now called uh, uh, called Citrus. So an old retail company actually changed into a global mixed-use developer investor. Um, meanwhile, uh, the Ocean Holding, which has uh, different um, uh, components, does not only include Ocean Retail International, which operates the hyper and supermarkets, and does not only include citrus, which uh, um, produces real estate development in several countries, but it uh, since 2006, it also owns 49.9% uh, uh, of the capital of Oni Bank. So, um, and, and this is um, Mm, uh, a phenomenon which reflects how non-financial companies like Ocean 
uh, go through financialization. It's financial, the company's financialization itself uh, manifested also later in 2019 when Citrus issued its first corporate green bond. Uh, as we know, bonds are debt instruments in which the issuer pays an interest rate to the investor. Citrus used the funds raised through this operation to finance or refinance green assets, green buildings. Greening is a must nowadays. Um, later, a little, bit, a little bit later, these bonds were admitted to trading on the Luxembourg Stock Exchange. Uh, if you look at the Citrus uh, website, uh, you see how they present themselves and they say, I will quote here a bit, we are an impact property investor aiming to transform its sites sustainably for the prosperity of local communities. Imagine, they say, a brand new world in which cultivating life, cultivating life has value and caring for the fragile makes us stronger. So let us see what made Citrus stronger. Uh, there are 8 billion euros of real estate assets. And as we know, these real estate assets are an asset class, which is a group of financial instruments, but it differs from financial assets, such as stocks and bonds, because they have physical qualities. They are real estate uh, grounded on land. Uh, Citrus runs 50 development projects in 10 countries in Europe and Asia, so has a very diversified global portfolio. So that's, again, a central investment strategy for them. Uh, they have uh, 300 retail-driven sites, which were developed to rent out uh, or other uh, differently put to use these sites and building as an investment property. And this is about the financialization of retail real estate uh, into which Ocean, Emotion, Satrus, um, and, and their investors not only park money into, but they 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 gain mostly revenues from rent, and also obviously they make these investments to increase uh, their revenues in time. Um, they have, um, as they say in this website, twenty million square meters uh, in their ownership, um, which again. Um, allows another mechanism of financialization, the use of land as collateral in case. In Romania, besides the tractor rule from Brasov that they bought in 2012, um, and, and they owned the whole land nowadays, and they built the Corasi shopping resort, in 2019, uh, the uh, Citrus decided to make another investment in Romania in Reshica, which we also could follow with our research on the platform of machine building plant. Okay, so this was the, the global investor. Let us uh, go into some details about, about um, local processes. And obviously we need to start with the pro process of privatization. Tractoral factory was included in the first private sector adjustment loan that Romania received uh, with conditions from the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and Development in 1997, so quite early. Um, but it was liquidated only, so to speak, in 2007. So it went through four unsuccessful privatization attempts. And in 2007, the National Privatization Agency decided to liquidate uh, Tractoru through an insolvency office and, and dismissed all the remaining employees. Um, the, the assets of the factory um, were sold at a competitive open action. Um, and as a result of this open auction, uh, the factory and land were acquired by a British investment company via the local firm Flavus Investitie. 
Flavus Investiti declared from the very beginning that they don't want to continue the industrial production, but they want to, uh, to restructure the whole area, transforming it into a real estate development. The Romanian state pretended that it does not agree with these uh, plans. Um, nevertheless, uh, at the end of the day, uh, after when the European Commission, which also analyzed this dossier of privatization, decided that the auction was legally conducted, uh, actually um, the, the tractoral uh, uh, land and buildings entered into a new phase of their existence. But this happened in, in, in 2000, um, 2009, when, when Favius Investiti also already obtained an authorization for a zonal urbanistic plan to restructure the industrial platform. But due to the crisis, they didn't do anything. Um, uh, uh, and in 2012, they sold the whole land, the buildings, and the zonal urbanistic plan to Emotion that we heard about earlier. Uh, in 2014, Emotion demolished all the buildings, excepting a few, and uh, we will see a little bit later which ones. Um, and the first stage of the development uh, was the, the uh, realization of Koresi Shopping Resort, which opened in 2015. So, um, Actually, the, the, the Citrus, who, who, who bought the, the property, uh, uh, also developed it in its, uh, in its um, shopping uh, dimension. But the whole project has also other actors, and they were local actors. And let us see who were they. Uh, there was this Casper development uh, company uh, with other former developments in Brasov, who uh, took care of the residential development uh, in, in the area. Uh, in the uh, first two stages, they realized uh, around 2,500 flats and, and um, they had a plan to, to um, produce uh, additional 3,000 uh, flats. Uh, I had the chance to, to interview the CEO of Casper Development in October 2021, and I would like to give a quote from this interview. She said, because she was a woman, I engaged in a partnership with Citrus in 2016. We made a film together called Imologia. I would have never been able to accomplish such an endeavor on my own, primarily because I lacked the money to purchase one hundred hectares of land. No local builder could have afforded what Emotion did. They had the money, owned the land, and were experts in such investments. Then she were, was talking about um, uh, her company compared to other uh, residential uh, developers in Brasov. Uh, she said uh, that uh, uh, they are much better because they, they operate with a profit margin of only 15%, whereas, as she said, most businesses in the city seek profits of at least 30%. Uh, uh, her business model uh, um, was about you know, uh, making different companies uh, from planning through construction, monitoring, advertising, and sale enterprises. So in order to control better the whole, uh, the whole investment. Um, and uh, also um, it, it was she who, who shared with me uh, that uh, uh, about 65% of the customers of the Koresi residential uh, flats uh, are those who buy flats for their own use, so 65%. But the remaining 35% buy for investment purposes. Majority of them, she said, uh, purchase two, six flats, uh, and, and much less are those who purchase between 10, 30 flats. Okay, what about the Coresi business campus? Um, that... Uh, um, it has a different uh, history in a, in a way. Uh, the, the land 
of uh, circa 20 hectares was bought by the local company Agenta Management who sold the land to, to Citrus um, in 2017. So these were actually these were actually the the um, uh, industrial halls um, which um, were not all of them were not uh, demolished. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm pinpointing this building. This wasn't an industrial hall. This was the uh, administrative building of of the factory. You can see in this old picture that they kept the old architecture and restructured actually the building, uh, but did not demolish it. Okay, uh, and uh, the later um, accomplishment of this project is the Cosmo Hotel, which was constructed by Citrus and opened in 2021. Uh, but Citrus made a contract with a local company called Cromwell, uh, the owner of another highly branded uh, local hotel. Um, other actors which take part in this in these processes, however, directly they cannot be called uh, real estate actors, but uh, their career and income is very much linked to planning uh, these new real estate developments. So the architectural offices. Um, in this case, uh, they were very sensitive in incorporating uh, elements and memories of the industrial past uh, into the into the new development. Uh, so here you can see uh, they kept the old tractor on on the building uh, somewhere in the middle of the residential area. They made an exhibition uh, which uh, displayed the history. Uh, of tractory factory and even its prehistory and and uh, it, it also I don't know if it's visible here in the Coracy shopping uh, resort uh, area they, they are also uh, very nice uh, white clean tractors exhibited uh, okay uh, besides these actors and the local processes uh, the city hall also, uh, played uh, an important role uh, in this uh, in this development um, through uh, authorizing the the urbanistic plans and the construction authorizations. Actually, right the the the, the city's uh, general urbanistic plan uh, referred to the to this area as an area of urban regeneration. Also, in the context when the the city and not only cities, the whole country and not only the country um, aimed to get rid of industrial production from the city, pushing it towards uh, towards the the um, villages uh, composing the brush of metropolitan area in this case. Um, so the, these urbanistic plans, but besides the urbanistic plans that were uh, authorized by, by the, the local council, um, the city hall invested money into improving uh, the quality of this investment, of this investment by uh, making uh, an important road uh, across, across, uh, uh, across the, the private uh, district from public, from public money. The greening uh, tendency is more and more uh, 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 accept, uh, stressed uh, uh, nowadays, especially after the new color, no political color of the local government, but not only. Uh, and I just saw some recent uh, declarations of the of the uh, local CEO uh, C, uh, CEO sorry of Citrus uh, uh, welcoming the the greening plans of of um, of the of the municipality urban entrepreneurialism at large is also a component of uh, of creating conditions for for real estate development as such. Why? Because uh, the municipality, and obviously not only in the case of Brasov, but in the case of all the um, um, cities and localities across the country, 
uh, they they consider these investments as a source of income uh, for for a city which is eager to attract investors uh, in the lack of uh, other uh, centralized developmental uh, uh, resources. Okay, so. Uh, now, Chiara, I, I still have like... Uh, you have um, 10 minutes? 10 minutes, good. Yeah, so um, now I would like to make a synthetic um, a presentation of uh, three of our main conclusions uh, from from the red urban. First, I would like to speak about the, the patterns of real estate development in Romania. Besides um, this uh, pattern, special pattern that I already uh, presented, um, development on former industrial lands via urban regeneration, there are also uh, processes of urban sprawling towards peripheries of the cities and metropolitan areas, but also densification pattern within the ex existing districts. Um, this uh, the geographical locations uh, resulting from the industrialization actually are in the higher need of private capital, so therefore they are a, a, a huge opportunity for investment. And um, besides creating themselves uh, uh, exchange value on the market and increasing the value of the land, they also have an impact on the exchange value of the of their surroundings. Who and where uh, uh, develops um, in the residential sector, we could observe that they were only mostly Romanian developers, uh, and they did these residential developments mainly in the capital city, Bucharest, and second tier cities or regional cities but that we could see in the case of Cluj, Brasov, Yash, and, and Craiova in the case of our research. Commercial real estate is something that um, uh, is, is flourishing kind of everywhere. So we could uh, uh, also uh, uh, learn about big investments in uh, uh, third tier cities, um, such as Burlad, uh, Bragadiru, Turgujiu, and Reshica, with, with, with uh, this commercial investment, and mostly with retail and, and shopping malls. Um, and, and here in this sector, um, uh, we have a lot of, actually the majority of them are, are foreign investors, as they are also in the sector of um, office, uh, develop, office building development. Um, conducting interviews with some people from these retail companies, we could we could learn that actually they they not only target uh, large cities, uh, but but are at the stage of their uh, evolution in Romania, in which they expand their businesses towards uh, uh, cities with uh, below fifty thousand inhabitants. Because they they hope that they can create you know, and they can rely on the consumption model, which became very widespread and welcomed all over the country. And these these um, retail companies, food retail companies, are also developers. They always or rent or even construct their own uh, their own buildings. And where they appear, they are a good sign, you know, for other investors from other real estate, estate sectors. Um, and come somehow they are act like an invitation for others to come and invest. Okay, the, the big institutional investors or investment funds are interested in the build to rent development model. So therefore they are not present uh, in the residential real estate sector as it uh, advanced until now. But from now on, as um, real estate uh, um, experts uh, foresee, um, under conditions in which um, the, the interest rates uh, increase, uh, it is expected that more and more people will not be able to access uh, mortgages and they will switch towards the private rental sector under the condition in which basically we don't have a public rental sector in the country. 
So um, this built to rent developmental model uh, favored by institutional investors was, was uh, predominant even until now in the commercial real estate. Um, another phenomenon that we observed currently, this means in the past two, three years, is that multinational retail companies transform their businesses into mixed-use real estate development. And um, uh, even the, the Romanian uh, uh, retail companies uh, do this. For example, uh, a recent example in Cluj, Julius Group, original uh, developer investor from Yash, uh, backed up by uh, Holland-based uh, investment funds, Atterbury Europe, make a huge uh, investment in Cluj on uh, one of the still existing uh, industrial platforms, which is planned to go through urban regeneration, uh, constructing a, a mall. Okay, so actually this is their, their logic. Of, of investment, uh, the logic of profitability, and uh, um, having uh, being uh, uh, under under the the impact of 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 their sense of being up obviously, um, they that afterwards they construct a whole nice ideology around this, and they start speaking as citrus. Also, we heard spoke uh, about community development, about green areas, about culture, about everything that they bring as benefit or promise to bring benefit uh, um, to to the city. Okay, another another set of conclusions uh, is about the role of the industrialization uh, in the advancement of real estate development. Um, here, I I made this collage. Uh, it um, it also suggests um, you, uh, it, you can even detect a kind of gender aspect into this transformation or how they are represented. So here you see uh, a small statue of a male worker, which I could see in one of the courtyards of, uh, of Armatura from Cluj. And, and here you can see um, a commercial uh, of, of a development uh, from, from Brasov uh, that promises a spa at the, uh, within the, the, the new block of flat uh, for a life without stress. Uh, and obviously the, the transformation of buildings are actually uh, somehow yeah, putting into contrast the, the old uh, uh, with the, the new, the unwanted one and the desired one, the past and the future, communism and capitalism. So it's, uh, yeah, why is the industrialization important for real estate development? Uh, uh, through the industrialization actually, uh, happened in Romania, what we call the primitive accumulation of capital. Uh, 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 obviously, the privatization, which led to the industrialization, was part of, of, of this. Uh, then, I don't know, if we look at the, uh, those state-led private property funds, which were established by the Romanian state in 1992 to privatize factories, uh, we could see how a uh, few years later they used these old public assets and their value and, and how they circulated its value through different financial channels. They used it uh, when they were transformed into private equity funds, some of them with investments in real estate. Um, okay, so um, uh, the, the industrialization is also... Uh, uh, the industrialization connected to real estate development is also a, a source for financial capital, for banks, for the interest rates paid by the entrepreneurs involved in real estate development. Um, additionally, the former industrial lands and buildings, as I already said, general rental income and can be sold later at a higher price than bought and also can be used as collateral for other loans. 
the industrialization also contributed, as we could see in the case of example of, of, of Brashov, uh, to the collaboration between local and global capital. And it was also part of economic restructuring, the contraction of the productive economy for the advantage of consumption-based uh, growth. So everybody has a right to a spa kind of development. Okay, the, the last set of conclusions um, I would like to emphasize here is what uh, can be learned from our, from our research, how can we contribute to the international literature on real estate development studies. Um, the existing literature is mostly about the financialization of real estate development as it happens in advanced capitalist countries. We reveal uh, 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 the, the processes from a semi-periphery of global capitalism, Romania, and, 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 and display the relations between local geographies, the global moment, and these great transformations that I was talking about. Um, okay, uh, further on, uh, our, our research uh, shows that uneven development, uneven geographical development, manifest itself in uneven real estate development and its uneven financialization across as in and within countries. Uh, it, our, our study also exhibit that capitalist transformations in Romania were backed up by a process in which international organizations urged governments to ensure the conditions for the formation of a market economy and catch up with Western development patterns. Therefore, our, in our case, was very uh, tempting to, uh, to stress the role of politics, the role of state and transstatal actors in this economic uh, restructuring. Secondly, the existing um, international literature um, emphasizes that uh, the financialization of real estate development actually uh, is about uh, the territorialization of real estate development because real estate assets are transformed into financial assets because financial markets are intersected with real estate markets. Uh, for us, when we focused on deindustrialization, we re brought into the attention the spatial territorial aspects of real estate development, um, um, analyzing how 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 um, these uh, uh, former industrial assets were both a spatial and financial uh, uh, under the pressure of a spatial and financial transformative process. So our analysis re-territorializes actually uh, this. Um, sector of, 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 of studies. Um, okay, and, uh, and the last idea would be that um, the existing international literature talks about uh, how the logic of uh, um, real estate development made by, by global capital decontextualizes actually this, this process. Because as we also saw in the case of Citrus or Atterbury Europe or NAPI or others who are present in Romania, they have uh, their own investment logic in their mind in the context of their global portfolios. So it might happen that they don't respond to the local needs of development. So definitely Cluj wouldn't need first and among uh, all uh, a new mall uh, uh, to refer to this, this very recent example, but making a mall is in the logic of, of the developers, investors. Um, so we, uh, in, 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 our, in our research, we re recontextualize actually uh, this this phenomenon by by focusing on how these global investment strategies connect to 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 local development, local processes, local uh, local actors. Uh, nevertheless, uh, agreeing obviously that um, uh, real estate and urban development in capitalism is subordinated to the interests of of capital. And, and therefore, uh, as a, as a four kind of point of conclusion, but it's actually uh, a, a question 
to uh, all of us uh, involved in these two research projects to Red Urban, to the Beyond Inhabitation Lab, but also uh, many other interested people. So how can uh, how can we think about um, 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 struggles against uh, dispossession, uh, which happens in a capital accumulation regime into which real estate development as a business is so much embedded. So this is also, I guess, uh, a relevant question um, for all of us who are also housing justice activists. And there are quite a few people in the public uh, who uh, are are doing that political work day by day. And we wonder always how can we organize nationally, transnationally, uh, against the subordination of uh, urban development and housing development to the interests of capital, local or global. So yeah, uh, thanks for your attention. Um, and um, here, uh, yeah, I mentioned the, the financial supporter of, of our research, that's a Romanian academic um, financial support program. And I put also the, the address of our website uh, and I'm looking forward to be able to share with you the collective volume as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nico, for the interesting presentation. And uh, I will go directly for.